I just met my father in town to watch him die before my eyes, y'all. My father left home before I could get my feet beneath me, before he could teach me how to walk hard and chore like a man should. But that's all good, because instead of crying into a pity pot, I learned to walk with a ditty bop. And this, this dignity I got, which is not quite dignity, but pride, hides the pain I feel for not knowing dignity for real. And I was 16 when I first met my dad, and though I should have been glad to meet him, I learned by experiencing the way society treats him as I begin to believe there might be a real conspiracy to destroy young black boys. And that at some point, my father was a young black boy whose joy was crushed in the nomadic press of oppression. And that lesson helped to father the sort of father my father would come to be. I just met my father and I'm watching him die before my eyes. I was getting to know my father and the frustration, the problems that made it hard for him to bother with me. My mother became self-sufficient and indifferent to the memory of my father and forgot the sacrifices that millions had made to make me. Her disappointment and despair made her speak with little care inadvertently, not realizing that when black men ain't shit, she's referring to me. She is hurting me by speaking to the black man I may one day be. I was 20-something when I began to love my father due to a series of failed decisions that was disrupting my potential. Decisions I wasn't making or privy to in the planning process. Decisions that held no conscience for the person I'd come to be. My less than average education cloaked a brilliant mind whose brilliance could be found in words that rhyme. A potential so potent that it transcended the circumstances, the situation, and the moment yet whose promise couldn't achieve the potential we all could see. So I began to love him for his civil rights fight and resolved to overcome and empathize with the failed promise of a once great movement. <clears throat> but my father's failing to raise me helped to make me this Frankenstein of a legacy, and failure created me. See, he didn't train me, so when I had my first baby, I wasn't quite the father he thought I should or could be. A father I never had an opportunity to see. And I'm not really sure what he expected of me. I guess like any parent, he wanted me to be greater than who he had been, to grow past his sin. But by nature, growth needs nurture. And though my nature was to be greater, for my lady, my lack of nurture... For press use only, Baby Grand I Records. my father and I'm watching him die before my eyes. His skin has grown cold. He is old. And this world has become harder and harsher. And though we've gone farther, I am in the exact same place as my father was when he was fathering me. And now I see what fathered the father to be and what he would eventually father in me. Because despite my protest, I see my father in me to the extent that my father is me. And the echoes of past pain in his eyes are the present problems that I see. And I need my father to guide me, to confide in me, to believe that I can make things better and rely on me. And I'm learning to stand again and I need my father to walk with me. But he's too sick to talk to me and his memory is fading. His story is fading before my eyes. The wisdom born from a pastime of pain and agony will be lost to a generation of apathy and misunderstanding, revising history to suit their own ego. The cycle begins anew, and my father is still dying no matter what I do. The levees that hold my tear ducts falter and fail as I try respectfully to get my father to connect with me. But my father's soul is shedding its skin, and the time to teach has reached its end. Till I feel the warmth of life in my children and then promise to break the cycle with what will be my father's greatest lesson. Never again. Peace.